So in September of 2021, my dad was found to be positive with COVID. We didn't think that this would be a big deal, but um, while he was home, he continued to worsen in his symptoms to the point where my mom ended up taking him to the emergency room. Um, and as soon as she got into the emergency room, they ended up admitting him because his blood oxygen levels were actually significantly lower than what they needed to be. So once dad was admitted, um, we at that point thought, you know, maybe a few days on oxygen, he would be okay and come back home. However, he continued to decline. Um, he got to a point within a couple of days of where he ended up being in an ICU bed. And so of course, um, we, we were scared, we didn't know what to expect, but just being aware of visitation restrictions with patients with COVID, he really advocated that dad be transferred over to Georgetown University Hospital, um, where my husband Matt works, because we knew that he could at least visit and uh, be with dad while none of us could. So um, Matt was able to arrange for dad to be transferred over to Georgetown that night, and, um, and all we could do from there was just pray, um, because what light ahead was the darkest storm our family has ever faced, and just um, with so much uncertainty, um, it's all we could do. Yeah, so when my father locked over at Georgetown, it was nice because his mom said I could at least uh, keep an eye on him and pray over him uh, every day. And unfortunately, his oxygen requirements kept going up and up and up. And it got to the point where it was so much oxygen pumping in that he couldn't eat or speak, communicate with us. And it was, he was miserable. And on top of that, uh, his attending physician, Alan Roberts, told me that his blood carbon dioxide levels were creeping up to dangerous levels. And it got to the point where it was causing organ damage. And he went into kidney failure, uh, had to be placed on dialysis. And in fact, it got so bad that the, the doctors wanted him to go transfer to what's called an ECMO facility. This is a different hospital that has like a heart lung machine and we didn't have that at Georgetown. And so uh, it just so happens that Jess's sister, Laura, is a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist out of VCU. And so she and all the ICU docs at Georgetown were calling all the hospitals on the Eastern Seaboard to try to transfer him. So this was, again, like I said, the hardest thing that we've ever walked through, the darkest storm that I've ever been through in my life. And it was definitely a challenge. It rocked my faith. Um, I, I did struggle through doubt, like, Lord God, I don't understand what it means to trust you or to have faith. And, and I, looking back now, I can see how the Lord grew me in this because I probably was facing, placing my faith on an outcome. And the Lord was just taking me on a journey to, to look to Him. That's all he kept saying, like, look at me, look at me. And to a point where I was able to accept if it was the Lord's will to take dad, I had to know and trust that this was good. It was not easy, but um, that's what I had to do. And and I think um, it was actually listening to one of Nate's sermons that he shared. It was the Stressed and Depressed um, series where Nate was talking about um, just the perseverance and how the Lord works in us. And so just meditating on those scriptures and um, the Lord just meeting me exactly where I was when I was questioning and doubting really helped. And I think also just our prayer groups, our um, small group that rallied around us to just fill us with um, truth um, while we were walking through this. And, and, um, and again, my family, God had, God knew we were gonna go through this. God knew every, you know, our lives way before we even go through it and just how he, put our family into play. I have um, three siblings and we all um, were supportive of each other. Every night on Zoom, we would get on a phone call, we would support each other, we would give medical updates and we would pray as a family. Um, our siblings who are from out of town would even send us food um, so that we wouldn't have to worry about it. And so um, we just encourage anybody that's going through this to reach out, to um, ask for help. Definitely ask for help. Let people know what you're going through. It is not easy. It is not something to be done alone. And also um, just get someone who can point you to truth and not to stray away from the goodness of God, even though it's hard to see. Yeah, and I would just say that from my standpoint, I mean, it was it was the biggest trial I've ever been through. Um, we describe it as emotional whiplash because some days you would be really excited because some, the numbers would get a little better the next day they'd be a little worse and so I mean I, it was hard to function in that kind of a setting um, and so we really just had to rely on the Lord and you know I'm, I'm a doctor myself
myself, so I always like to be in control, and I had I felt like I was totally out of control, and all I could do was depend on the Lord. Um, but I learned a lot through this. I mean, I, I learned what it's like to, I haven't had a loved one this sick before, so I learned how important it is to stay optimistic through these things, despite what you may be hearing. Um, we, the meeting's gonna last another two days, so we have prayer warriors, Jess's mom, a whole group of people praying over him. Um, and then, you know, just very slowly over the course of many, many days, we saw little bits of hope. His carbon dioxide levels start go down little by little. His oxygen requirements kept, or his oxygen levels kept going up a little bit by a little bit. And over, um, you know, another month or two of time, he got to the point where he could be taken off of the sedative medicines. But then we were terrified again because he wasn't waking up. We thought he had severe brain damage. Um, at that point, the pastor Nathan got to come in and pray over him because um, he was able to have visitors. And after another few weeks, he was finally able to look at us, communicate a little bit, call some simple commands. And so this was a huge blessing. The, the docs at Georgetown told me that they've never seen anybody sicker who's come back um, from COVID. With the visitation restrictions lifted a little bit, I was able to go visit dad. Um, and it, again, just by God's grace, I happened to visit him on a day where I could notice that um, although we saw dad waking up at Georgetown before he was transferred over to Bridgepoint, I noticed that dad almost seemed to backtrack. He wasn't as responsive when I would show him pictures of the kids. He still couldn't talk at this point, but he, he was just different. And I also noticed that the tracheostomy tube that they placed in there had blood in it. And, um, and, and just as time went on, I was getting concerned over how dad was acting and responding and he was also starting to motion to me to get my mom. Um, so when my mom got there, we noticed that he, he just kept bleeding and bleeding and um, it turned out that dad lost a significant amount of blood to again where he would have suffered more organ damage or he could have been bled to death. So it was by God's miraculous hand that we were able to get dad transferred over to Howard emergency room where they were able to transfuse um, units of blood from what he had lost. And, um, and and at Howard is where they were able to work with him over the course of a couple more months. This was another two months of ups and downs, but they were able to get dad off of the, the breathing tube to where he was able to breathe again. And this is an, just another testament of God's goodness because again, just because of how sick dad was, they never even knew he'd be able to breathe on his own again. So they were able to get him off the breathing tube. They were also able to take out the feeding tube to where dad could start learning how to eat again. So they were able to start getting dad out of the hospital bed. Um, Cause mind you, he'd been bedridden for um, about three and a half to four, three and a half to four months at this point. So as you can imagine, all his muscles atrophied and he had to learn how to walk again. After a total of about five months, dad was able to come home on February 2nd, 2022. And um, we are here to just testify to this miracle that the Lord has performed and that we have witnessed um, just so many ways in this situation. And dad was actually transferred over to the Georgetown ICU unit where Leah, who is um, John, Pastor John's wife, actually was a nurse and was able to pray over dad too. And, and, and so, um, God has just been so good and faithful through all of this, although it was so scary and we didn't know what to expect. And um, and again, just testifying to the miracle that not only did dad's, was dad's life spared, but his brain is fully intact. Um, he, his sight or his um, sense of smell, taste was not disrupted and, and his lungs, the one that was scarred the most, um, two pulmonologists from two different facilities have seen his lung x-ray and said that, they, that his lungs are clear. And again, this is just, um, can, you cannot deny that God had healed our dad and restored him. Um, and he also no longer needs dialysis. His kidneys are completely functioning again, and he is on the road to recovery still physically. Um, when dad was at the ICU, he did suffer severe nerve damage um, just because of the position he was in. So his hands are still, um, in the recovery stage, but um, other than that, he is in great spirits and we are all closer to the Lord for this. And we just, are, again, just give thanks and honor and glory to our Lord Jesus, who we um, give all, just we know that saved our dad. And um, 
has brought us closer to him.